How's it going guys? So recently we got the latest new version update for Google Chrome, this time it's Chrome 90. So they release a new major update every six weeks or so, so I'm gonna go over what I think are the best features in this update. It has been a while since my last Chrome update video, I think what I'm gonna start doing is just making one every maybe five updates or so, because each individual update doesn't usually have a whole lot to talk about, so maybe I'll just kinda group them all together every five and then make a video about them. Also, if you haven't updated Chrome yet, all you have to do is go to the settings tab and help and then about, and then it'll auto update from there. All right, so enough chit chat, now into the features. So from now on, Google Chrome will now be defaulting to trying the HTTPS secure version of a website instead of the non-secure version, even if a user tries to type in the non-secure version, HTTP. Some websites by default would do this if a user went to the non-secure version and there was a secure version available, it would just put the users onto the secure site. Other websites had both a secure and non-secure version, but if a user went to the non-secure version, it wouldn't automatically redirect them, but you could use an extension such as HTTPS Everywhere that I've talked about before, where it would automatically try the secure version, and now Google Chrome itself will be doing this. So if there is a website that supports both secure and non-secure, and the website doesn't redirect to the secure version, then Google Chrome will take over and do that anyway. So hopefully by now, every time you go to a website and it has a secure encrypted version available, you'll always get that. Now, I would still probably recommend using the HTTPS Everywhere extension just in case there's some that slip through the cracks or whatever, but things should be now more secure. All right, next up, Google Chrome now supports a new video codec called AV1, specifically optimized for web video conferencing using WebRTC, which is kind of like a set of APIs that all have to do with web communication, that sort of thing. Anyway, this codec has already been supported by certain apps such as Duo, Meet, and WebEx, but if the web browser didn't support it, then it wouldn't use that. It would use an older codec, and now Google Chrome for desktop does support that. This has a lot of advantages. For example, it has a lower bandwidth minimum threshold, so people who have very, very low bandwidth, crappy internet, whatever, can still do web conferencing, and it's also has better efficiency. So if you do have a really good internet, hopefully it should still use less bandwidth, but also the video quality, the compression should still be all really good. And also apparently this codec has improvements for certain use cases such as screen sharing over VP9, which is another codec that's used by stuff like YouTube. Apparently AV1 is even better for stuff like that. So if you've ever done screen sharing and it always looks kind of crappy, maybe if you use one of these web apps that supports this codec, it'll look better. Here's a new little feature. If you right click in the Omnibar, you can now select an option to always show full URLs. So if you weren't aware, Google Chrome for a while has kind of hidden certain parts of the URL that it felt that most users really didn't need to see or weren't even sure what they mean, such as HTTPS. A lot of users don't even know what that stands for. It just kind of shows the lock on the side to signify whether it's secure or not. But if you are someone who does prefer to see the whole URL, then you can simply right click that now and select to see URLs all the time. I wouldn't necessarily recommend enabling this because one reason for hiding part of the URL is to prevent scam sites that have a whole bunch of subdomains and then making it look like it's paypal.com, but really really it's paypal.com slash whatever blah, blah, blah website, you know, that sort of thing. So that would show you the true top level domain, that sort of thing. So I don't know if you're a power user, you can still enable it, but you don't really have to. Next up, if you're someone who always has a ton of tabs open, you're gonna like this. You can now search through the open tabs on your browser. So what you do is you click the little drop down arrow thing at the top right, and then it'll show a list column of all the tabs that are open, and you can actually type and search through them, and then it will filter the titles and descriptions of all the tabs that are open for that keyword. So by that, I mean basically anything that shows up at the top of the window bar, the title there, so the name of the website, and then the description that usually comes after it. So anything up there, it'll search for that in all the tabs. So to be clear, it doesn't search the contents of every tab and website open, just the titles and stuff. But still, if you're someone who has like hundreds of tabs open at any given time, you never close tabs, this might come in real handy. Next up, as usual, this new Chrome update has what are called developer trials, which are new features, but they're hidden behind flags in the Chrome menu that have to be enabled. So one of these is the new clipboard file pasting feature on websites. What I mean by this is, you know how on some websites you can drag files onto it to upload, whether it's an image site or maybe attaching a file to an email in Gmail? Well, with this feature, it will allow you to copy and paste 
onto websites using just the Windows clipboard. So you just do Control C and then Control V on the website and it will paste it. That way you don't have to drag it. If you want, this feature can be enabled by going to the Chrome Flags menu and then searching for clipboard file names. And then it kind of shows a little description of what I just talked about. All right, so that's it for Chrome 90, but let's go over some features that have been added since my last video, for example, in Chrome 87, 88, and 89, or at least the most notable features. In Chrome 89, they added an accessibility feature called live captioning, which you may have actually seen on Android. Basically, it takes any kind of video or talking or whatever that goes on in the web browser and automatically transcribes it and shows it on the screen. And it does really well because obviously Google has billions and billions of audio samples of talking from YouTube. So they kind of put that all into AI and now it can transcribe all kinds of spoken words and then puts it on the screen. So you can enable this by going to settings and then accessibility and just turning it on. And you don't even have to be hard of hearing to be able to use this. Maybe if you're in a meeting or something and you don't wanna have the audio on, but you still wanna watch a video and see what they're saying, you can enable this feature and then get a transcription while you're watching it and no one else will know if you don't have headphones or something. Also in Chrome 89, they added web NFC. So you know NFC, the thing where you can hold a phone up to a tag or whatever and it'll do stuff. Well now apparently websites will be able to use the web NFC API to read and write from NFC tags. So you can hold a NFC tag up to a computer if you have some kind of, I don't know, terminal that detects it or your phone, I guess. And then it will do something on that website depending on what the tag says. All right, now as for Chrome 88, there was not a lot of features added here that are probably relevant to the average user, but there was one where if you're on Windows, now Chrome will support better the dark mode option in Windows. So if you have dark mode for apps enabled, there are some places where Chrome will better reflect that. For example, in the internal settings windows, it'll now show like a darker scroll bar, that sort of thing, whereas before it didn't. So it just is more consistent. Finally, Chrome 87 had a couple of features that are pretty interesting actually. First of all, they revamped the PDF viewer. So for example, now there's a new list of pages on the left side and also the zoom functions and stuff were added to the top of the viewer instead of like before where you had to like hover over the page and it would kind of appear at the bottom right. I would always forget where the zoom function is. Now it's just a lot more consistent with other PDF viewers. I think it's a lot more convenient now to use. Also in Chrome 87, they added what are called Chrome actions into the Omni bar, which is the URL bar. For example, you can now type in stuff like delete my history and it'll show a little button now where you can do that. There's also some other options for typing in stuff like update browser. It'll take you to the browser update page. Incognito will open an incognito mode, that sort of thing. There's some more, but that's just some examples. So that should cover the most notable features for you guys, I think that are most relevant. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments, what's your favorite new feature? If there's something you've been waiting for. And also, if you want to subscribe, I make a couple new videos every week, all sorts of topics, not just this sort of thing. So be sure to do that. If you guys do want to see the last video where I talked about new features in Chrome 86, I'll put that link right here. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.